it's a sad day for um for american journalism as many talented and brave reporters have been put out of work amidst an unforgiving cycle of layoffs american journalists the patriots that broke stories like watergate and um they okay they weren't journalists they worked at buzzfeed and the huffington post just for clarification i can't do that with a straight face <laughs> John Doyle in. Heck off, Kami. Hello there, pals and gals. Welcome, as always, to Heck Off Kami. Before we talk about BuzzFeed and the Huffington Post, I have a really good list of everyone that got fired and the crap that they used to get paid to write, so stay tuned for that. But I want to really quick make you guys aware of a few things. So since this channel has started to grow so quickly in the last month or so, I've been told by a few of you that YouTube has been trying to censor it. They've been removing likes from videos, blacking out the screens on the videos, and it's like... I had to deal with this on Facebook when I first started and now on YouTube too and it's just so annoying because they know that I don't have the platform to really call them out on it because this channel is still so small so they do it to Crowder, 5 million people hear about it but with here, you know, it's not so much but we're of course not going to let that stop us. Uh, they're trying to censor us because they're afraid of truth. They are afraid that someone speaking these simple facts can gain so much support so quickly. So yeah, the way that you guys can help, just keep thumbs upping the videos, keep sharing them with your friends, commenting, stuff like that. So we have a chance at competing in this algorithm. And I really appreciate all the support that you guys have been giving this channel. I really do. It means the world to me. And I just want you to know that the end goal of this whole thing is just to eventually charity box Mark Zuckerberg and just beat the shit out of him. That's really what it is. But anyways, the Huffington Post and BuzzFeed have had layoffs. So what we're going to do today is we're going to answer the question of why would they have layoffs? Here's a hint. Because they're in the business of journalism and they're a bunch of dishonest radicals masquerading as reporters of objective truth. And I want to make this point clear. I'm not celebrating that they're out of work. That isn't what brings me joy. What brings me joy is that these companies are so biased, so pretentious, so arrogant. They really think that everything that they report is fact. But then a website like Breitbart is fake news. Huffington Post was co-founded by Andrew Breitbart, by the way, if you guys didn't know that. And the funny thing is, is the reason he did that is because he wanted a place to exist where the leftists could really showcase how radical they'd become. And he would be happy to know that that is still serving its purpose quite well. And I know that not everyone who got laid off was a radical leftist ideologue, but the point here is that the free market is beautiful because when your company reports primarily anti-Trump, anti-America, anti-white crap, and then tries to sell it to the people outside of New York and California. Privilege, I think power, access, luxury. It's not going to go well because newsflash, people don't agree with you. You are the minority. Headline. HuffPo employees shocked to learn that not everyone thinks white people are the worst. Um, that's another thing we're going to do at some point. I just want to run a search of like white people HuffPo because it's just really funny the stuff they write. So let's have a look here. This guy, Brian, uh, he's bummed about the op-ed section of the Huffington Post going away. Uh, I wonder why. Weren't they reporting groundbreaking stories? Um, no, here's him getting mad about the Covington kids and their parents. So... Uh, it's a bummer we won't be getting any more of that. Here's Laura, who I guess reports about gender politics. I don't even know what that means. Like, hey, Laura, do you have the story done about gender politics for this week? The only people, the only people that actually care about gender politics are the people that write about it. So she's just going to like write an article that expands on something that her colleague has written. And then they just go back and forth and read each other, each other's articles. It's like, no one reads that except them. So uh, let's see what other insights this woman provided. How is anti-Catholic keep your rosaries off my ovaries? Add to resume. Creative. Uh, this one who's been laid off here for some reason because her literal PhD in romantic comedy is no longer an asset to the company. Who could have foreseen this? She describes herself as talented and lovely. And I feel like you can't give yourself subjective labels like that, but okay. So it's a day of loss because we'll have one less voice reminding us that racism is the fault of white women and you should watch romantic comedies for three months of your life because productivity and you should marry yourself because you're just so perfect, right? You're just, you're just talented and lovely. Uh, Carolina was laid off after six years of covering pop culture, identity, marginalized communities, and such. We will surely miss her groundbreaking work on why we must create a gay and Latin superhero, and also her reminders to resist, 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 self-care, and then resist, resist, and so on and so forth. Sarah, after six years of BuzzFeed, unfortunately no longer going to be able to give us guidelines on what to do when you're a pregnant woman that thinks she is a man despite partaking in that key difference between men and women, which is that women can get pregnant and men cannot. Brandon here out at BuzzFeed, and uh, he'll no longer be able to let us know about transmasculine sex toys. I actually Googled that so you don't have to. Transmasculine is how the left says tomboy in 2019, basically. It means someone that is a girl but has a masculine gender identity, and I feel guilty even dignifying that by 
uh, defining it as anything other than absurdity. Alana here, not at BuzzFeed anymore, but hopefully her dreams can still come true. Uh, those dreams, of course, are that she wants to see more happily married couples get abortions on TV. More abortion propaganda, please. More dead babies. I want happily married couples to do it so that it gets normalized. Please and thanks. Uh, this woman, she actually feels empowered in her firing. She also has a picture of RBG in her house to remind her that she can still kill babies, which is interesting because it doesn't look like she's going to be there to uphold that right for you for much longer. And then there's this. I, I don't even know what this is, but... Lewis here has been let go from BuzzFeed, but he's proud of everything that he's done, like blaming the Washington Redskins for a false racism story taking place, and then also going on to be upset with people for apologizing to the students for spreading lies about them. HuffPo writer Talia is gone. Uh, she says she hates this business. It's the fault of the business. Why? Maybe because you're allegedly in the news business and then you write things and publish them and they're not actually news, like that 10,000 IQ conclusion you had about the Kavanaugh defenders. They don't believe the allegations with no evidence, therefore they don't believe women are people. And she's wondering why she's not going to get paid anymore to write things like that. That's it. I don't want to go through these anymore. Shout out to Legitimus LARPer on Twitter for making that thread. It isn't just HuffPo and BuzzFeed, it's even Vice, which in my opinion is the absolute worst. Um, they're not looking to downsize. And here's why. There was no market for any of this PC progressive crap that they published 15 years ago. There was absolutely no market. Then, the era of political correctness emerges during the Obama administration. These companies start hiring younger, more radical reporters, and everyone's buying into the PC narrative company overexpands, but then, oh no, America's waking up. We're done with the political correctness. We're done with the news reporting that always reads as, this is my opinion, and if you disagree, it's because you think I'm not a person and also you're racist. And that's the beauty of capitalism, the capitalism they so despise, because you can publish whatever you want. I mean, not anything, but basically anything. Have a heyday, but if there's no market for it because what you're writing is asinine, no one's going to pay you to write it anymore. And that's what's happening. People are tired of the HuffPo, they're tired of BuzzFeed, Vice, and all these other media outlets that are all radically left, but still pretend that we're just reporting the facts. If you don't like it, you just can't handle facts. Shut up! You bitch about Trump for a living. You can hate him all you want, but if you actually did manage to impeach him and remove him from office, which will never happen, by the way, your content is gone. So be grateful that you still have jobs writing about this stuff for some reason. Enjoy it while it lasts, because people have had about enough of your, your news. Hey guys, if you like this video, leave me a thumbs up down below. You can click my face to subscribe, leave me a comment, let me know what you think. And share this video with that one friend you had that always posts articles from BuzzFeed and the Huffington Post. Let them know that this channel is actively growing more than those news outlets right now, which, you know, is misleading because we're still small, but it's still, you know, it helps me sleep, okay? Thank you so much for watching and may God bless America. Ka-chow!